Hey everyone, Maz here, and today we have a very special video for you. I'm back with Foch, and today we're smoking the Padron 80 years. Let's get into it. So Foch, what do you think so far? Cigar's fantastic. I have the natural. I know you chose the Maduro. Yep. The natural wrapper on this cigar gives it a lot of spice, a lot of character. Definitely not as sweet as the Maduro, but um, you know, I'm getting a lot of spice, some cocoa, and believe it or not, and I don't always get this, I'm getting like some cherry. So what are you getting out of the cigar? Well, you know, when it comes to their portfolio of cigars, the natural smokes different than the Maduro. It's not necessarily any stronger. It just has a different taste profile, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, the natural wrapper, whether it's the 1000 series, the 1964, or the 1926, the natural as opposed to the Maduro, with the natural, I get more kind of spice forward. I agree. Where with the Maduro, I get more kind of rich, rounded flavors. Mm -hmm. Equally as strong, you know, I put this cigar medium to full. As a matter of fact, you know, George Padron, at one point, we were doing an event together. I think it was at Wall Street. You weren't there at the time. but. Someone asked him, like, you know, who was looking for strength, what is your strongest cigar? And, you know, George thought about it for a little bit, and he was like, it's got to be the 80th, just of the way it smokes. And when you think about it as a perfecto shape, it lends itself to have complexity, layers of flavor, but also it builds an intensity as you smoke it because you go from the, obviously, uh, you know, a, a small foot of the cigar, and then it widens up, it transitions, and then as you get into the cigar towards the band, it narrows again. Sure. So that's, that's what creates the intensity of this blend. Right. It's gotta be a hard shape to roll. Yeah, as a matter of fact, George actually shared this with us before when he was here and did a video with us. Only one person in the entire factory rolls this cigar. Wow. That's his only job. Doesn't roll all the shapes, shows up at the factory and rolls the 80th. Wow. So obviously a very unique, a very special cigar. You know, I, I called it the 80 years to introduce the video. Some people call it just the 80, some people call it the 80th, essentially, the 80th refers to, it commemorates at the time, the patriarch of the family, sure. Jose Padron's birthday. So when he turned 80, the Padron factory released this shape and this blend to commemorate his 80th birthday. George does a lot of different shapes in the 1964, the 1926, you know, and as I said, this is part of the 1926 right. portfolio, obviously a very special cigar. And you know, for people out there that don't know, the 1964 is slightly milder than the, yeah. than the 26. So I, I say the 1964, I always say it's medium plus in strength. Mm -hmm. The 1926 is definitely medium to full. And depending on the format of the cigar, shape of the cigar, it could be on the fuller side of medium sure. to full. Which to me, this cigar always winds up there. Oh, yeah. It might start off more medium plus, but by the time you get halfway through that cigar, especially towards the end, mm -hmm. you're on the fuller side of medium to full. And I think that's why George shared with that customer at the time, he thinks it's his boldest blend in his portfolio. And that's saying something. Yeah, I agree. So getting into the cigar a little bit, that spice is still strong. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting that spice. I don't taste that fruitiness anymore that I was getting from the initial light up, but the power's still there. Mm -hmm. um, it's very complex, very complex. I agree. Um, mainly I'm getting a little spice and cocoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cocoa's always on my radar when I'm smoking Padron. It's always right there. Um, it lets, lets you know what it's, it's gonna be throughout the cigar, honestly, when mm -hmm. it comes to those cocoa notes. And, you know, when you talk about complexity, right, and intensity, there's no doubt in my mind, because obviously we smoked many Padrones over the years. And as opposed to other sizes of the 1926 blend, this one definitely has more intensity oh, yeah. and more complexity. Yep. So, you know, if you're a fan of the 1926 and you haven't had the 80 yet, you definitely want to try it because it smokes different than anything else in that 1926 line for sure. So on the Maduro side of things right now, as it's changing for me, mine started off with a really nice cocoa note and then got into, now I'm into a more of a spice. There's spice there, there's cocoa there, and definitely strong coffee, espresso notes. I mean, really bold coffee notes. And almost like um, almost like a semi-sweet chocolate, you know what I mean? When it has yeah. a little kind of like bitterness to it in a good way, mm -hmm. you know, when, like dark chocolate. Sure. Uh, and I love that because it's, to me, this cigar is all about kind of complexity and intensity at the same time, which is, you know, that's a beautiful thing. When it comes to blending cigars, you make something that's complex, but yet it has intensity. 
I mean, that's an art. That truly, when you're blending that cigar, that person who came up with that blend, George, his father at the time, that's a true art. Because you can have layers of flavor, but also have driving intensity. To me, that's special. Have you retrohaled this yet? I have, yeah. When you first start it, yep. and you retrohale it, mm -hmm. you get a big blast of a uh, spice, a big blast. I mean, as you get it further into the cigar, now that I'm almost halfway in, mm -hmm. you know, it makes it a little easier to retrohale it. The flavors become more rounder, like you said mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. and that spice tones down a little bit. Well, actually a lot for me. Yeah. Toned down a lot. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about intensity, right? In, in a good way. But what I love about it is, is when you bring it through the nose and you retrohale it, it has this like obviously pronounced spice. That's when the spice really shines in this Maduro for sure. But the finish, the way it resonates on the palate after that retrohale, as it dissipates, there's real round flavors of like strong coffee, espresso and chocolate, you know? And I love that dark chocolate and coffee note that it kind of lingers on your palate. It's got a really nice long finish, but extremely, balanced cigar you know it's just like one of those cigars it's got like aggression but it's like right on the edge because it's not too spicy for sure but i love the flavors come off of it i love things that finish long and it resonate with that cocoa coffee note to it yeah i was just going to say that when you know when you got a cigar that has that really long finish mm -hmm. you know that's one of the characteristics that i love yeah just like a good uh a good bourbon yeah i like that uh that long finish yeah you know i think for people out there that search for like tasting notes and they can't really find them when you smoke a cigar with a longer finish, it almost gives you more time to decipher what you're tasting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then that spice, as it goes away, some of those notes will jump out of you. So for people out there always to say, you know, I can't taste these specific notes. First of all, I always say, don't stress about that. They'll jump out at you when the time's right, right? But for a cigar that has a long finish, that's when it's easier to really pull, pull out those tasting notes because it'll resonate on your palate and it gives you time to really decipher what you're tasting. Uh, so to me, with this Padron 80th or 80 years, if you don't taste cocoa or chocolate on the finish, I would be surprised. Now again, some people won't be able to coax it out of there, but to me, it's pretty evident that it has those flavor profiles and that tasting profile. Yeah, I agree. And speaking of bourbon, what you bring for us to pair today? Well, we got a special treat today. We got Widow Jane 10 year old bourbon. Nice. Want to get into it? Sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, by the way, excellent. Before we get into the pairing, I have to say, look at look at the way that's burning. Beautiful. Right? I mean, the construction of the cigar is exquisite. You know, when we said, you know, only one person in the factory rolls the cigar, this shape, when you, we talk about that, obviously that one person is dedicated to that size because they obviously are a master roller, a torcedor, right? The, the best of the best in that factory are trusted with a cigar of this shape. So you could see obviously the craftsmanship in the roller. I thought it needed mentioning. I mean, this thing is burning like, like an ace and the, and the ash is actually real firm. I'll probably wind up dropping it in my lap at some point, but I'm gonna let it go for a little bit. Yep. So anyway, I had to mention that, I digress. So what do you think of the pairing? I mean, excellent pairing. You know, this is a bourbon that I discovered probably about three months ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a bottle at home, I enjoyed it. You know, nice fruity flavors, dark cherry. Uh, chocolate covered cherry, I should say. Yeah. Spice, caramel. Yeah. You know, but I, I enjoyed it. You know, I killed the bottle. Yeah. Um, so, it's not uh, you hard know, to do. I'm glad we, uh, you chose this today. Well, you know, right off the bat, I was thinking, all right, phenomenal cigar, more on the rare side. One person rolls it, an exceptional blend. We had to do something special with it, right? Yeah. We had to do something small batch. The Widow Jane small batch bourbon. For people out there who don't know, it actually comes out of Brooklyn, New York, which is not far from us. Not and I heard, all. you know, they give tours. So, you know, maybe we'll get to visit sometime, but it would be awesome to be able to visit there, considering it's only up in Brooklyn, we're in Philadelphia, and they're able to actually witness it firsthand. Yeah, I would love to do that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the bourbon is sourced from distilleries, which they won't mention, but they say they come from distilleries in Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee. And then they're brought to New York and they're actually proofed there 
Is it and, bottled there? And finished there. Okay. So basically what they do, there's a process where there's this renowned water source about 100 miles north of Brooklyn. The water has a lot of natural minerals in it. Mm -hmm. And they proof the, the bourbon with this water. So what it does, it adds actually layers of flavor and it knocks the proof down a little bit. So it's a 91 proof bourbon, which, you know, it's not cask strength. A lot of times people that want something that's like really aggressive, uh, above 100 proof, this isn't it, but it's proof positive that you can make something intense, rich, complex, that doesn't have to blow your doors right. off, right? Uh, but I love the processing of it. I love the fact that it's a New York company, a Brooklyn company that kind of wanted to change the game a little bit. They're using, you know, bourbons from three different states. And every batch of this, when you look at the bottle, it's numbered it by batch and also by bottle number. It's only five barrels. And once that five barrels are gone, there's a new batch. Yeah. So there'll be some, not much variation, but there'll be variation from different batch to batch. Are you getting any oak? A little bit, of course. I mean, I mean with the age, you get you, uh, yeah. most of the time you get a lot. You know, you get some oak. Yeah, on the nose, I get like brown sugar maple, and then on the palate. I mean, I'm not getting much oak on the palate. I mean, there's a little bit there, but it's kind of in the background. You know, that that brown sugar syrup, like maple syrup, mm -hmm. though, is there for sure. I get a little bit of like fruit. Which you know it, it it plays well because you mentioned you you know get like dark cherry mm -hmm. flavors like ripe cherry flavors from the, the cigar you're smoking, and with this cigar as it develops now, you know it has those coffee notes, espresso notes, chocolate, and there's like almost like that chocolate covered cherry thing going right. on too. Uh, but no, a phenomenal pairing. You know together, I mean I think it works. I mean the bourbon being 91 proof does not overpower nope, the cigar. Not at all. You know, and we talked about it. Not only do we think it's Padron's arguably most complex cigar mm -hmm. based upon the blend and the shape. But George himself said, you know, it's his most complex cigar. He finds it to be one of his most complex cigars. So with that said, you don't want to overpower that cigar. Right. And I think, you know, the Widow Jane does a phenomenal job of it. So yeah, Maz, the cigar definitely uh, smoothed out yep. a ton. You know, it's it's very smooth, especially with the retro hail. And I think it pairs, like you said, pairs well with this bourbon. Um, you know, the flavors uh, co-mingle great. It's a perfect pairing, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, the other reason why I chose it, aside from the fact that it's a small batch, we're smoking a special cigar, is because I think this cigar culture has thoroughly embraced uh, this bourbon. You know, and talking to people, you know, just, you know, obviously talking about cigars that they smoke, spirits that they enjoy. When I talk to bourbon fans that smoke cigars, a lot of them bring up Widow Jane. I don't even know if they don't know the whole backstory, but they know they like it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, I found out about this bourbon through one of my customers. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because, you know, we ask people at times, you know, what kind of spirit do you drink? And then it gives us an indication of what cigar they might like. Sure. And a lot of times when I'm, I'm talking to someone who enjoys like bold flavors that are bourbon fans, Widow Jane comes up all the time. So I think it's one of those bourbons that have been totally embraced by the cigar community for sure. I mean, and obviously you can't argue with it. No, not at all. Right? Perfect. Yeah. And you know, with Padron, you can never go wrong. You know, you're talking about iconic brand, right? We're talking about iconic size and blend. The two of them together, the Widow Jane, the Padron 80th, I mean, that's, that's a match. So yeah, Maz, this is uh, definitely a cigar that's a treat for me since I don't smoke it all the time. It's one of those cigars that I would pick up for a special occasion. Yeah. And yeah, when you think about it, you know, obviously it's rolled by one roller in the whole factory. So it's out there, but it's not out there, right? Right. And, you know, we're pairing it with a small batch bourbon. So I think both speak of special occasion. You know, they're in the upper echelon of kind of like, you know, uh, as far as like sought after. but. That's a, like a reward, sure. you know, when you, after a, 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 maybe a celebration, a birthday, uh, you know, an anniversary or such, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, uh, you know, a, a birth of a child, a, a birth of your child, be perfectly. If we sat back and we, we had the Widow Jane with this Padron 80th, that's a special night. So for sure. Yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, but before we depart, make sure you hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and, and we'll, we'll see you here next time. time.